Hi, it's Ron Gold again, and I'm actually sitting in quite a unique position, in, almost in the middle of the rather splendid Gin Emporium here at Three Tree Hill Lodge, um, who is sponsoring this series of videos. Um, today we're going to look at the fourth in our series of five generals of the Natal campaign, and uh, it is the Boer general Louis Boerta. Now, to give full justice to this man would take far more than a few minutes uh, in a short video clip. So we're going to concentrate primarily on his involvement during the war. Uh, Louis Wurter was born uh, not far from here, in Great Town, in uh, 1862, making him a British subject by birth. Interestingly, um, so were his two compatriots, Jan Smuts and Piet Joubert. But at age seven, the Wurter family moved back into the Free State, where they became very successful farmers. At the death of his father at age 20, a family friend by the name of Lucas Meyer became his mentor, and much of his military career will be tied up with Lucas Meyer. In 1884, when he was 22, he was one of a group of Boers who supported the pretender to the Zulu throne, Denizulu, uh, against his arch-enemy Zibepu of the Mantlakazi people, in what was probably one of the final throws of the dice of the Zulu Civil War. It resulted in a substantial tract of land being granted to the Boers, which became known as the New Republic, and the first president was Louis Wurter's old mentor, Lucas Meyer. He himself, Louis, moved to a farm in the Freyhead district where he would farm reasonably successfully. Two years later, he married uh, Annie Emmett, the daughter of an Irish surveyor. After a few years of farming, he decided to try politics, and in 1897 won a seat to the Transvaal Volksraad. Only two years later, the South African War broke out. And probably as a result of his political activities, he didn't hold a very high rank in the military, coming into the war as a common soldier, like a burger in the Freyhead commander. But only a few weeks into the war, he distinguishes himself during the Battle of Ladysmith, and uh, when uh, Lucas Meyer became ill, uh, Louis Boerter is effectively promoted to the rather strange rank of assistant general. A few weeks later, he is tasked with taking a raiding party across the Tugela River, further south down towards Durban, to see if there was any opportunities of a uh, further advance in strength. And uh, within a day of them crossing the river, uh, Louis Boerter's party, or portion of the raiding party, is involved in ambushing the armoured train. A uh, fairly minor incident, excepting that Winston Churchill would be captured there in an incident that will launch Churchill into the public eye. Pretty much the only thing he really, really wanted. One week after the capture of Churchill, uh, the raiding party will fight at the Battle of Willow Grange. And once again, Louis Boerter, who had already escaped death very narrowly during his excursions with the Zulus, the same thing happens at Willow Grange when, in the process of leading a counterattack, his horse is shot out from under him. Um, his old commanding officer, Piet Joubert, who had accompanied the raiding party, would be badly injured in a fall from his horse the day after the Battle of Willow Grange. And that incident effectively pushes Louis Boerter up into the most senior officer in Natal, initially, informally, and later it would be confirmed. And it is in this capacity that he will command Boer troops on the north bank of the Tugela, opposite the rail bridge at Calenzo, and uh, General Buller would throw his force of 15 to 16,000 men at the Boer positions there on the 15th of December and suffer a crushing defeat. The British army then moves further upstream and Louis Boerter himself will be involved again. The Battle of the Rangeworthy Hills, which is a battle that took place two to three days before the Battle of Spionkop. And once again, at the Battle of Spionkop, it is Louis Boerter, by his strength of character, by his inspiration, by his charm, with all the personal skills he has, holds the Boers together for a great victory. And as one author has said, that Spionkop was Louis Boerter's battle. During the early days of February, when the British make a determined attempt to break through and cross the Tugela once again, Louis Boerter will be involved in the Battle of Tugela Heights. And it is during this battle 
that the British will eventually effect the breakthrough. Interestingly, they break through the section which was not commanded and controlled by Louis Boerter. After the siege of Ladysmith was uplifted by the British, uh, Louis Boerter will continue to play a military role during the remaining set-piece battles and during the guerrilla war. But it seems that his heart was not as much in it as it had been previously. It is said that during the Battle of Colenso he had been so astounded by the manner in which British soldiers marched unflinchingly into uh, withering fire of the Boers um, that he concluded that the war was unwinnable from a Boer perspective. And we notice now that he uh, will put out feelers to essentially General Kitchener and others and begin a process. And probably one of his greatest uh, achievements will be the survival of the Boer people. There weren't many Boers who had the vision and the lack of bitterness that Louis Boerter did to understand that they needed to bring the war to an end, otherwise their nation would face extinction. And it was a long and drawn out process. And during the course of this process, he will become increasingly alienated from a large sector of the Boer people who had become unbelievably embittered and angry with the British, with the deaths in the concentration camps, with the destruction of their farms. And they were never going to forgive. And they were also not going to take it kindly to someone who was holding out a hand of friendship to the British. But nonetheless, in uh, May of 1902, the war comes to an end and there's an opportunity for reconstruction and Louis Boerter, together with Jan Smuts and others, will continue to negotiate with the British um, to rebuild their countries. He will become the first Prime Minister of the Union of South Africa and um, in 1914 he will be involved in that capacity in uh, defeating the Boer Rebellion. And that probably left more scars on his psyche. Because during that, he would find himself up against comrades who had fought side by side with him against the British only a few years earlier. He plays a role in the First World War, uh, leading a military expedition into German Southwest Africa. A brilliant expedition, by the way. And uh, that campaign was published all around the world. He's a signatory at the Peace of Versailles. And it is said that during the deliberations at Versailles, he stood and addressed the other delegates and he said to them, whatever you do here, do not treat the Germans too harshly. Otherwise, you will have another war within 20 years. Well, doesn't look like they listened to him, did it? Louis dies in August of 1919 and his friend Jan Smuts always said that he died of a broken heart. The rejection of his people is something that he could never really cope with. But in the end, he's one of the, the great historical figures in our country. He's a person to which we, as South Africans, owe a great debt of gratitude.